In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build a custom table of contents slide in the all new Adobe Captivate. Okay, this video is inspired by many videos that came before, many tutorials that I've come up with before uh, that deal with the whole idea of having an introduction slide where you've got all your table of contents, your chapters, sections, and you navigate to those sections from that main page. Returning to that slide, of course, uh, will also display a jump to quiz button once you visited all the sections. So I'll show you how to build that today. First of all, let me remind the members of my YouTube channel that as an all-in-one member, you have access to download this project file. I'm going to make two versions of it available. This basic version here where nothing has been done, so you can follow along with the tutorial, but also a completed version if you simply wish to reuse this however you see fit here. So let me go ahead and press save to make sure I've saved the correct version here. So let's talk a little bit about what we have here. So on this opening slide here, there is an image block that has simply been customized. If we click on our visual properties here, you can see you know, the, the standard uh, properties inspector for visual elements, including the components that we've added to this slide here. So there's an image, a caption, and a subti uh, subtitle. Now, the next block here is a simple drop-down selector. This is what I'm going to use to jump to the various sections uh, as we're calling this a table of contents here. Finally is a button block with a single button on it and its job will be to jump to the quiz, but I only want to make it visible once you've visited all of the sections here. And for our purposes today, I've just got a single slide which functions as section one, section two, section three, and so on. Last but not least is a final quiz slide with a simple continue button. And then, you, of course, you would add your quiz questions after this particular slide here. So let's start off with the things that we're going to need for this particular project here. So starting on uh, the table of contents slide or slide number one, we're going to need to customize our drop down menu. Now I've already gone ahead and done this to make it easy. Uh, but of course, if you go under options here, this is where you would select the number of items. And to edit those items, just simply open this up as I've done here and you can double click and type in what you need for this section here. Nutrition and wellness, right? And we'll repeat that for each of those there. Simple enough. The thing we're gonna need is the ability to keep track of which of these sections we've already visited. The easiest way that I know how to do that is with variables. So I'm gonna go into the window dropdown menu and I'm gonna select variables, and we're gonna click on the plus icon to create a new variable, and we'll call this one lesson visited 01. I'm just gonna select all that text and copy it before I click on create here, and we'll create a new one here. I'll just paste that text in and just change the, the 01 to 02, and we'll do the same thing for 03. And lastly, zero, four. Let's create those. So uh, to get out of the variables window, just click outside of that window and that returns you to your regular view here of Captivate. Now I'm going to only update that variable on the completion of each section here. So here we are on section one. I'm gonna select the main menu button here and we're going to go to the interactions properties of our properties inspector and we're going to go under more and select assign variable we'll select lesson one visited and we're going to assign it a value of one click done and the other action we need for this button is to return to slide number one. So we'll click on add new action and go to slide one. One of my favorite features of the new Adobe Captivate 
is that everything is very visual. So when I select the slide, it's very easy to see which slide I'm actually going to, even if I haven't labeled it correctly. So let's do section two. Very simply, we're going to assign a variable for lesson visited two, a value of one, and we'll click done. We'll also jump to or go to slide number one. Done. Do the same thing for section three. Let's select our main menu button. We'll assign our variable lesson three or section three, a value of one. Click done. And we will return to slide one. Done. Finally, mental wellness, main menu. Let's go and select assign variable, lesson visited number four, a value of one and done. And we'll add the new action of going to slide number one. Click done. Okay, now on the other side of that interaction, if you will, is our drop down selector itself. So we have, of course, um, the actual element itself here, and it has a unique property under its interactions view here of choosing which selection is occurring here. Uh, any selection, you know, you could click on anything and it would just do whatever it is that you select down here under action. But our trigger in this case is very specific. We need to choose uh, a trigger, which will be one of the four drop downs, and then the action will be to jump to that particular slide. So for nutrition and wellness, we're going to go to slide uh, section one. You could add a transition if you wish. I'm not going to in this case here. Click done. And that takes care of jumping to nutrition and wellness. Let's do diet and nutrition here. Go to slide, section two, done. You can see how easy this is. Physical activity, go to slide, physical activity, and done. Last but not least, mental wellness. Go to slide and number four and done. Okay, our jump to quiz button here, we need an action for that as well. And that's going to be go to slide final quiz and done. Now to make this not visible in output with the button selected, all we need to do is click on hide during publish. And you'll see this little icon of an eyeball and a computer screen here. If you select that, you'll see a line going through it and now it's not visible in output. But how does Captivate know that I visited all of these sections? So we need to write actually a slide level interaction with the condition that all four of those variables now contain a value of one. So we'll click on the slide level interactions plus icon here and we're going to base this on every time we arrive on the slide or every time we enter this slide we're going to check for a condition and in this case it's four conditions so if the variable for lesson visited number one is equal to a value of one press save add another condition so if our variable for lesson visited number two is also equal to a value of one, press save and add another condition. If our variable for lesson visited number three is equal to a value of one, press save. And then last but not least, we'll add another condition to check if our variable for lesson visited number four, I'll scroll down a bit here, is equal to a value of one, and then we'll hit save. So basically when all four of these things are true, we're going to show our jump to quiz button right there. Click next, 
and then done. And now we should be good to go. Let's preview this project, test it out, and make sure that it works as expected. Okay, I'm going to minimize my play bar and just stick it up in the corner here, and let's test it out here. So we're starting off on our table of contents slide. Let's select nutrition and wellness, and I should point out you can do these in any order. This will take you to section one, and I click the main menu, and of course now I can make another choice, diet and nutrition, click the main menu, physical activity, main menu, and last but not least, mental wellness, here we are, and when we return to the main menu, our jump to quiz button is now available, and that will take us to the first slide of our final quiz. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.